Welcome back to NBA Cinema. So today I kind of want to talk about Anthony Edwards and his approach to tonight's game. Now we know that the Minnesota Timberwolves, they don't win this game. The series is completely over. Um, they're kind of on life support right now and they need to, you know, get, get rejuvenated, man. Get back in this series because if they win tonight, at the very least, they'll have another game in Minnesota to have the opportunity to win a home game and come back and try to steal one in game six to play game seven on their home floor. Uh, so it has very big implications. Instead of, you know, losing tonight and then your whole season um, be based on trying to win four games against Dallas in a row and winning a home game to stay alive. I mean, winning a road game to stay alive. And Anthony Edwards talked about his assertiveness and his approach to tonight's game and the way he's gonna look at the game. And one of the things I would caution based off what he said, um, well, let's listen to what he said first. I don't wanna get into it yet. Let's listen to what he said and I'm gonna tell you what I think about it. Let's pick. You said after game two that you always want to make the right play, but maybe the right play would be more shots for yourself. Right? Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> what, what will it look like? like how does how uh, that? Now, y'all going to see tonight. It's going to be a lot of shots. Um, I'm going to be super aggressive. I mean, I haven't took more than 16 shots in each game, so I'm going to be ultra aggressive coming out for sure. You, you mentioned that John Elbow and you know, live is your son. When you went back and you looked at that, I should have just shot the fucking first shot. Yeah, <laughs> that simple. Yeah, for sure. That's all. But you, you see a rookie dig on you. I mean, you probably think you got, you got some food. I mean, it's not even, I don't care who in front of me. I don't even see the person in front of me. I'm just trying to get to my spot and shoot. I don't really care about what kind of do you think it could be even a benefit now that you guys are on the road because no one out here is at home or distracted from something because you're all together? Um, I mean, I think I think we play better on the road anyway. I mean, every time we, besides the Phoenix series, we haven't played well at home. So, I mean, I think we're looking forward to this game because we play better on the road without back against the wall. Can you be in attack mode against this defense? Can I be in attack yeah, mode? Can, can yeah. you get to the yeah. rim? Can you, yeah. can you beat yourself? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I've been getting away from it, but I'll definitely be back to it tonight. Why do you feel like you play better on the road than at home so far? Like she said, less distractions, less people around. I mean, you're in a hotel, you in those four corners um, by yourself, really. I just play the game, so I ain't got nobody bothering me. I think I think we um I think we're in a pretty good mood. Um, everybody smiling, joking, cause we we know, man, we know we we're a good team. Like we know it's not over. <laughs> like I'm not worried. I don't think my teammates or coaches. I don't think anybody worried. We just know we got to come ready to play tonight. So I like Anthony Edwards saying he's going to be assertive. He's going to come out looking for his own shot a lot early and often tonight. One thing I would say is I want to make sure that he's getting quality shots, though. I don't want you to just come out shooting um, because the whistle is going to be a bit different. So if you're crashing to the rim on a bang-bang play, you're probably going to get a charge. Um, you're going to have to play the mid-range. You're going to have to be decisive because they have size. You have Derrick Jones Jr., who's a great – well, I ain't going to say great, but he's a very good defender – um, and he has size and athleticism, so he's hard enough to get a good shot off on, especially giving up some height to him and, you know, really no athleticism. Like, he's not giving up any athleticism to you. And their back line defense, when you get to the rim, they have some elite shot blockers. You may have to test one um, early, you know, try to get them in some foul trouble, make the revs have to blow, blow the whistle. You're going to have to... Um, really pick your angles and, and really as far as hunting your own shot I'm just looking for assertiveness and getting other teammates the best shot possible because they're going to hear that and they're going to guard you as such so if they know you have tunnel vision going to the basket then they're going to treat you like that potentially draw charges you know they have the guys who can contest you at the rim um, so Yes, assertiveness is good. Being assertive, but also still looking to make the right basketball play because you have to mix it up. Yes, you have to call your own number, but you have to keep the defense honest and don't just come in the game saying, I'm going to shoot, you know, until my arm fall off, basically. 
Um, but I think that's what he meant when he said that. You know, I think he's going to look for his offense. And what I think Anthony Edwards is saying is he's going to lead by putting the team on his back early and then, you know, filling the game out. But at the same time, you want to let the game come to you. See what they're what, what looks they're throwing at you. Well, and I also think maybe he's seen some things that he's turned down that he could um, he, he could have been assertive on in those earlier games because he did shoot uh, 17 attempts last game, but I think he wants to get 10, 15 up in the first half, you know. Um, so maybe he's approaching it, the fill-out process of the game a bit differently. Um but I always think downhill Ant is is the best version of Ant. And I think, honestly, this team poses new challenges that they haven't seen. If you look at the first round, you know, having KD, uh, Bradley Bill, and Devin Booker, guys who's comfortable scoring the basketball, having the ball in their hands. Um, while they could be potent offensively, they don't pose much of a defensive threat with that lineup out there. Um so you got that. Then you have um, Jokic, as good as he is offensively. Um, it's a reason why everybody else on the floor is a decent defender. You know what I'm saying? Because he is not. And so for everything he did to them on the offensive end, def- on, on on the defensive end, you know, a lot of the players got right what they wanted at the rim. Um but now with Gaffer and Lively, it's not even like when one big goes out the game, then you can kind of exploit getting to the rim a little bit more. Um, both bigs do the same thing. So you're going to have to get into their chest to get those guys in foul trouble. But I do respect what he's saying. It's going to put a ton of pressure on the officials is what I'm hearing. And they either going to blow the whistle or they won't. Um, I think Anthony Edwards can get by – Jones, but I think Cat is going to have to be more assertive because right now they don't respect Cat as someone they're going to have to send doubles to. They feel like they can guard him straight up with physicality. That makes the floor shrink. So he's going to have to get hot from three point range or something like that, um, you know, to open up things really for Anthony Edwards. As long as he's playing like this, they ain't going to overly respect him and they're not sending two at him. Uh, Mike Conley Jr. is going to have to get in the paint. I think now if Conley can get in, make some floaters and make the D converge, then, yeah, he can kick it out to Ant, and Ant's going to have to shoot without hesitation. You know, um, Jaden McDaniels, they're going to see if he can make shots. I, I think they're comfortable with that um, because as he's growing as a player, they don't feel like he's quiet there yet as someone that they have to – you know, overly respect. They're, they're going to live with him having 35 to 40 points. You know, what's the likelihood of that happening? That's how they're looking at that um, at this stage in his career because he continues to improve. Rudy Gobert is not as this. I don't even like how he go up on his layups. He shoots from his shoulder, so he plays smaller by the rim than he actually is. And so they'll live with that. Um yeah, man, so and more important than him, he has to be better. Don't get me wrong. He has to be better. But I think some of the things that were there for him is closed off based off of the other things I said, if that makes sense. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section, though. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Till next time.